The following is a presentation of TFNN. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Every trading day, live at 10 a.m. Eastern. Call now, toll free at 877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The TFNN Bull Bear Trading Hour. Now, Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Welcome, folks. Appreciate your growling and prowling with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials up 34, Nasdaq's down 24, S&P's up 6, gold contract down $6, trading at 1534 an ounce. We get silver off eight cents, eighteen dollars fifty-four cents an ounce. Light sweet crude, really getting smoked here. Right down a buck sixty, fifty-five dollars sixty-eight cents a barrel. Notes and bonds. You get the ten-year down six ticks, one thirty seventeen. The thirty-year off eleven at one sixty-two twenty-five. And king dollar, king dollar up uh, three hundred ninety-eight ticks, trading ninety-eight seven thirty-five. The euro is at one oh nine. The yen is at one oh seven point five two, and the pound is at one twenty-three to one U.S. dollar. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. Inside the Dow Industrials, Nike. Nike uh, hit it out of the park last night, uh, no doubt. And I believe that uh, if we will... Oh, one uh, more. Look at that. <laughs> That's They're so not funny. quite an index yet. No, that, I pulled up, I pulled up uh, the Nikkei. Yeah. Okay, so, so Nike out here, we are trading... Where are we at? Ooh, 91.75. All time highs. Up 454... Look at that number, man. Huge. That's pretty intense. It sure is. And so the number on it, now, you know, what's so intriguing about this in Nike, folks, okay, is that, you know, you have tariffs, uh, but bottom line, there's, there's such a, yeah, let me pull this, because if we break down the, the segments, you're going to see that they're a worldwide company, so it's just not the United States they make their money. Okay. I, I believe they got it broken down. Oh, they don't have it broken down here. But this, it's I'm sure you're correct, though. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a worldwide. They sell Jordans. Everywhere, everywhere, right? yeah. everywhere. There, and there's, um, there's... the NBA is enormous over in China. Yeah. You know, that's the one thing the NBA really has going for them, how on a world scale that their athletes really are. And that would translate to Nike. No doubt. Yeah. If we go take a look at the Dow Industrials, what you're going to see is that Nike, I suspect, is the one that's holding the Dow up right now. The uh, oh, Boeing, too. Nike, yeah. 32 points positive. Boeing, 26. Um, Apple, 10. Yeah, Apple as well. Uh, no doubt. We are definitely going to have action out here today. So, <laughs> yeah. You, we, Yesterday, a little political turmoil, right? Yeah. Whether it's correct for the market to react to, you know, the proceedings of impeachment, whatever that means, right? right? I mean, there's a lot of what it does, does it even exactly mean happened yesterday, and the market reacted, for sure. Yeah. And then you just have, as we came on the air, the transcript of the call between the president and the Ukrainian president, Zelensky, being released. And... I'm sure we're going to be catching headlines, and whether that will matter or not, that's that's for you to decide in the market. We will find out, man, we will. but it's coming out. So let's see. This is, uh, so the transcript got released. Okay. Yes. So President Trump uh, asked the uh, president of Ukraine to work with his personal lawyer and the U.S. Attorney General William Barr to look into his political rival with Joe Biden, according to uh, a rough transcript of the call between the two leaders. Yeah. So we'll find out where the, the rest of this is going to go. What is pretty wild, folks, is that... Uh, if you follow this, well, we're all following this, okay? Uh, the, the ironic part to me is that I said to Tommy, I was going to send them this this morning, is that it was the Wall Street Journal that broke this story. <laughs> and so the, the Wall Street Journal writers, the ones that bottom line came up with the deal that the president eight times, you It was know, probably the whistleblower one that started it all, was it, maybe? I, I, it it might have been. I think there was a whistleblower story about it. Uh, either way, the, as it, it broke, The Wall sure. Street Journal is yeah. one that broke it, right? So this morning inside the Wall Street Journal, inside the editorial, folks, it, it has that, that uh, Trump, he just had a misjudgment. And so it, to me it's ironic because you get the Wall Street Journal is owned by Fox, and it's just going to be ironic. By it, Rupert Murdoch. And the yeah, yeah, it, yeah. So that it's like, okay, you opened the Pandora's box. Yeah. Now you're trying to pull it back. You have news and you have editorial and opinion, right? I mean, that's <laughs> what happens. Be, it's got to be wild. I just, I happen to, um, in here as well, interesting either way, Trump also asked Zelensky, the Ukrainian president, to investigate whether his country could locate a hacked Democratic National Committee computer server that became an issue in the 2016 campaign against Clinton. So he also wants the president to find Clinton's server. 
I mean, that's just pretty ridiculous. Trump mentioned Biden several times during the call, described allegations. As vice president, Biden had pushed to oust Ukraine's top prosecutor, tell a company his son was working for, claims they have been widely discredited. So, <laughs> we'll see. We and then tomorrow, you have the director of national intelligence in front of Congress. Right. And you have Congress going on a break, though, I believe, this Friday for two weeks. Really? Yeah. That, that could have changed uh, so with yesterday afternoon. Break, I but guess, I, huh? <laughs> they, yeah, I know. I did. That's a, yeah. Oh, man. Sick. Yeah. Let's go take a look at the bond market out here. So, oh, okay. So let's look at the bond market first. Okay. So this is what is happening, folks, also in the repo market, right? The Fed, so yesterday, bonds go topside, have volume behind the move. You get a sideways move out here today. Uh, you've done 656,000 contracts. Yesterday, you know, we did uh, 1.6 million. That's telling me bonds still want to go to highs. So on the repo market, what is going on in the repo market is that the Fed has put, they changed this yesterday from, an, not changed it, they added from an overnight market, now they're giving banks money for two weeks. Okay. And what this is setting up, folks, is this, is that it's setting up the aspect that the next squeeze is going to be at the end of this month. Okay. And so what they're trying to do is push as much money into the banking system as they can. And what also happened is that the Fed came out and said, okay, I believe whether it's 40 or 50 billion, but then the banks come in and saying, we want 100 billion. So they basically pushed it out. Yeah. They pushed out as much. So you're going to keep hearing about this, okay? And these little tweaks that are happening out here, um, I think it's important to keep your head wrapped around it because it is saying that the banks have more collateral than they have cash. And that's a liquidity event. You know, right. And just if we bring it home to all of us, right? Picture this. You know, you, you hear this many times. You can own, let, let's picture you get own a huge amount of real estate, okay? And then if you don't have any cash to take care of the real estate, it's a problem. You, you need that's both. Right. Yes. You know, you need both. Yeah. And then, because well, also what ends up happening is that that would be a hard asset that's hard to sell. It's yes. Like, you know, you just Illiquid. Know, illiquid. Okay. Yeah. So that's what you have happening. And, and the thing that's amazing is that what we're talking about here, what they have that is still a treasuries. <laughs> you know, you're talking about something that does not supposed to be hard to sure. move. Very up, liquid. You yeah. Know? So the bottom line is that they're going to be pushing uh, more into the marketplace. Gold. Let's go to the gold contract. Take a look at gold. Gold's backing down. Oh, we got to look at oil too, because I want to see what happened. With oil must be filling that gap. Yeah, oil. Gold's just a sideways move. Down six bucks. That's a sideways move. Uh, CLX. I think we're on the X contract. CLX. No, yeah, yeah, CLX. November. Yeah. So, 157. Yep, there she goes. She's after that. Look at that thing, man. So the top is 55.61. Oh, look, that's, this always blows my mind. What? Uh, it hit 55.62 so okay. far. So the, the fill in the gap is 55.61. That's, sure. that's That would have been Friday when we closed on Friday. That was the high of uh, Friday the 13th. Yeah, a and week then, ago Friday before yeah, the and, attack on the Saudi oil And then field. the bottom line is that they, you, you know, you opened up the uh, following day, uh, Sunday. And he goes to 63. I wonder who was buying Sunday at 6 o'clock when those futures opened because that tick was only one minute to five minutes long that it was up at 63.75. Yeah. Stay right there, folks. Tommy, coming right back. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. Come right back, folks. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading 
trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Ball and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's up 39. Nasdaq's down 32. Uh, S&Ps are off 8. And what we did have out here yesterday, too, by the way, folks, is that you got another expansion with volume on the way down. So when, you, when that happens, your probability goes much higher that we're going to continue uh, lower. If I show you this, uh, if we take a look at this, how this was set up, you got to remember that you had option expiration on Friday. And, you know, we got, we got the—it came down. It came down with volume, 97 million. Then on Monday, you got under that with tremendously lighter volume, 47, and that's, that's where it rejected lower price. What ended up happening yesterday? Yep, you try to get higher, and then the market blows out to the downside. We did 97 million versus the 97 million of option expiration. So your probability is a lot higher that, guess what? The market's rolled. Um, we'll see why this uh, August 5th date uh, shows up. But that's where I suspect we're going next. The, Three Qs, what the Qs did is actually break the trend line from the August 5th up, because we've been going up since August 5th. Um, in this particular case, you got both. You got a monster expansion of volume, and you're going to see that you basically got a break of the trend that started out here on August 5th, which is 179. And you can see option expiration, we had done 30 million. We rejected lower price the next day at 23, and then you're blowing it out yesterday with 41. And what happens here with the NDX, you can see you're in the lower range now, once you get back inside that 189.68. You know, so it's going to be pretty wild watching this whole thing shake out. Oh, and then you get WeWork. Yeah, right? Newman's gone. In fact, you know, this morning, folks, there's a lot of things happening. Is there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, uh, on the CEO front, WeWork's gone. Oh, man, I know, the right? The CEO of eBay's I, gone. Right, yeah. Um, there's, there's one other one. It's there like, might be. I know. Yeah. You're right. And so, 
It's going to be a The Newman deal is pretty intense. It is. I it don't is. know. Uh, I'm sure there'll be some great articles written about it because right. I want to find out how that struggle went. What happened? I thought he had 10 to 1 shares. I thought he had 21. He did. Uh, he gave them up. Yeah, that's what it said. It said he gave up. He gave up. He had he had tw twenty to one. Right. Twenty to he had one. Twenty to one originally, and, and, and now it, it's going to be three to one. Okay. They were trying to get him to ten to one. That was the yeah. first step. Now they got him to three to one. Okay. And he he is going to still have representation on the board, but it's going to be yeah. minority representation. Yeah. I, he's the the chief non something. Yeah. Non executive. Yeah. Chairman of the board. Exactly. Thank you. Right. Uh, giving like, huh? giving up the and, you know my my take is is it's all about. Even he knows it, and Jamie Dimon probably convinced him that it's all about, hey, we got to get this out to the public. We need their money. We, yeah. need, we need this piece of paper right. because you're going to destroy your own wealth. You already owe, he owes Jamie Dimon already. It had a, it's a great story, yeah. not Jamie Dimon personally. JP Morgan. Uh, JP Morgan. They've been a lot of um, banking relationships oh, monster with him money. for loans, it's, it's, loans it's, against the shares. Loans against the shares. He yeah. financed $500 million, yeah. uh, for for when he sold the shares. So, And I'm thinking that... They didn't say what the margin was, but I kind of picture he gave all the money. You know what I mean? So, let, let's say that you were Newman, the CEO, yeah, yes. and I want to buy the shares. So what what the bank did is put five hundred million in a pot, and I, I suspect they probably made us pay half of the money up, like you know, like a public market, fifty percent margin or something. I okay. kind of picture that they did more than that, but they don't know. The article didn't say that. Okay. But the. The article, you don't, you're not getting what I'm saying. I'm not, you're not, I'm not okay. following what, what you're what saying. I'm getting what I'm saying. Didn't he, he took out a loan against his shares? Is that this what he is, did? No, this is different. Okay. What are we talking about? Just start me from the scratch. He sold shares. He sold shares. Okay. Right. Right. But when he sold the shares, yes. J.P. Morgan was the bank. So if okay. I wanted to they buy the shares, I go, yep. yeah, I go to J.P. Morgan immediately. Sure. Here's the money, Tom. They no found problem. a private buyer. No, no problem. Yes, right. Okay. I just don't know what the margin okay, requirement right. was. Sure. Home. Do you know what I mean? I'm figuring 50%. You know, but it for might not be. For you to buy those shares. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. You know, just like a public market. Sure. But maybe not. Maybe it's 25% or maybe it's 75%. So are you saying they wiped out the person who bought them because of the loss of where they bought them at? And Everybody. Jamie Dimon's on the hook because he's, he's got, he, they owe him the money. They owe J.P. Morgan the money. Sure. So if those shares are collapsed below that price, right, right. he's on the hook. Yes. Only for that one. Sure. Then, then, he, gave, sure. then he gave Newman another $800 million. Okay, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's so many of them. It's yeah. like, it's like... You know, so it's good to see the market getting uh, some corporate governance, though, as opposed to just throwing oh, out to the public. Yeah, you know, there's, and there's, realizing that hey, there's, there's no doubt. You know, we're just marking up a company at almost fifty billion dollars with right. one man running the show, and right. they have no idea how they're going to make money, and they're valuing them, valuing themselves yeah. at a multiple that. We got to find one of these places and go in it and see what it looks we like. We work, sure. I, they, yeah. I think they have one. Remember, I said to you, I just saw yeah, you in scrolling in my Facebook feed uh, in Tampa. Yeah. So I'm sure. I'm yeah. sure they do. I want to see a top I, twenty city. If I want to see have. how this is done. Yeah, because they got free coffee, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. yeah. yeah, free coffee, expensive real estate for small spaces, right? Hey, so how about oil? That's oil. Right, right? Okay. So it's Wednesday. What time? It's about 10:23. We get the oil number every 10:30, 10:30 a.m. Eastern time. Looks like. The estimates right now between 400 and 500. Why not? We have a minute on the Bloomberg okay. left to give it a guess. We haven't given the chart a look. We'll do that right afterwards. But, you know, if you think oil is going to rise in price, you would be looking for less oil yeah. than they thought, as in a bigger draw. If you thought maybe oil was going to go down in price, you'd be looking for a big surplus, a right. gut. Uh, looks like the survey number is minus 400,000 barrels for the week. Whisper number a little bit lower, minus 525. What are you going to do? Uh, let's see. What are we, we're down about a buck fifty today, right? We're sitting at like fifty-five and change. So the question is, you want to play it to the downside or the upside? Uh, I'm we'll, figuring it's just filling the gap. Okay. Well, what does that mean in terms that of up or down? <laughs> that would mean it probably get a little bounce. We'll go. I was going to go bounce too. Yeah. So that means we're going to miss to the downside. Hopefully, if you were playing for a bounce, we're going to go minus seven hundred with ten seconds to spare. Oh, cool. I see. Yeah. I guess you're maybe saying. that gives it. No, that's going to be minus 700, maybe. There we go. You got it. We, we made it with two seconds. seconds. Left. Good. Okay. Perfect. So we'll see what happens. Let's jump over to the chart now and see what we have. So here's the price of crude. Quite a drop today. We're looking at the November contract. We'll get this chart to the front. We were just up at $57, man. Dropped almost 55.60. So I was taking a look at this over the break. I pulled up. A couple of the volatility trades. Here's your 11 a.m. spreads. Again, we're at 55.85. These are going to have 55.75.
Okay. Okay, so we're 10 cents in the bullish position with intrinsic value. So there's your bullish spread. After a lot of volatility this morning, too. Interesting. Yeah, there's your, yeah and we had to jump around to find, but 11s and 12s line up both with this price point. So we're going to have 55, 75. You have a 10 cent start to the bullish side. Here's your bullish spread. Going to cost you $25. You're getting into 56. The contract's at 55.83. The bearish spread, just the premium. You're minusing the intrinsic value. So you're looking at about 44. $45 represents 44, 45 cents away from 55.83. Ah, excuse me, 55.75, right? The noons, same exact price spreads. Here's your bullish one, 55.75. This time the bullish one is going to cost you 31 as opposed to 25, right? right? So you're paying six pennies or six dollars on each leg, probably. 55.58 is where you're selling the 11. There you go, eight on the, and 55.50 is where you're selling the noon. So you're looking at 56 versus yeah. 44. So you want to pay 44 cents for 11 a.m., or do you want to pay 56 cents in terms of how much movement you need for the well, noon? We'll, we'll see what happens. We've we got three minutes. We've a lot minutes. of movement already, man. Pretty wild. Yeah. 877-927-6648. Give us a call, folks. And we're going to have our man Teddy Kegstad up at 40 past the hour. We got any action in currencies, man? That oh, dollar index we, hit 100 big, yet? It's big, got some strength, action. man. Dow's up 32, Nasdaq's down 31, S&P's off 8. We'll come right back. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow, Dow Industrials right now are up 57. Nasdaq's down 21. S&Ps are off five. And oil, let's see where we are with these uh, oil contracts. Jumping now. back to the chart, we're looking at the contract. We'll pull it up. Oil trading 55.88. Not too much of a move. It's right not on. a holiday either. No, it's not, <laughs> right? And let me zoom in a little bit as the market's digesting it. And why don't we jump back and maybe pull up. Uh, the news, maybe we'll get it at the top. There we go. Crude oil. Look at how much it rose. Oh, boy. This oil should it get didn't smoked. come in at minus 700. It, this Did would it be interesting. Us? That's a plus 2.41 million barrels, folks. Yeah, here we go. So it's just going to be perfect. Here's the whole breakdown. So crude for the week, plus 2.4 million barrels. Median estimate was minus 600. Wow. My estimate, minus 700. Yeah. Uh, gasoline coming in with a build as well, 519,000 versus the estimate of a decrease of 564. Let's see, the distillate, look at, look at the huge miss in distillates. Minus 3 million barrels almost. The estimate was, was only minus 4. Wow. And meanwhile, you have Cushing with plus 2.2. And... Um, I wonder how these crude imports, minus 672, yeah. and you know so forth, shape that that inventory number. Nonetheless, with that, you should have seen the the price drop through the floor. But and, it hasn't. And we haven't seen it at all. Either that, or that we're getting a bad quote. No, it looks, it looks I, real. It looks pretty yeah. legit. It's ticking, right? Look at that. 55.91. We've actually ticked up. So someone had the numbers this morning. We've sold actually, it off. We've all actually morning. ticked up five um, pennies. We'll have to check back in. I feel like that's one of them that the market might be laying calm. Um, and if we go over and take a look at the S&P, the S&P got a little pop on that. Uh, I don't know if it's exactly that, but yeah, simultaneously, Dow's up 90 at this point. You know, S&P almost flat. Yeah. You know, yeah, we hit the uh, the low was when the transcript was released. You had a spike low at 10 on the dot. Yeah. Now, this is what's pretty cool here, folks. This spike low has volume. So that, to me, that's going to get tested. And we'll see how this shakes out today. Yeah. But that's saying it wants to get back down to that uh, 29.53. Yeah. And we're 29.69. We're only down a, a point right now. Uh, let's go take a look at some of the higher volume equities and see what they're moving around out here in the market in general. Maybe Nike with some action, number three. Oh, well, there we go. Yeah, yeah. Nike's up four, that's accelerating more too. Yeah, 92.07. That's up 489. That was 92.79 or something, man. Just pretty cool. mammoth, yeah. Uh, Advanced Micro's down 63. The chips got hit yesterday too. Uh, Roku's getting a little bounce up $1.57 about time. Yeah. Apple one up 168. Not bad. You get Slack down 149. Marathon Petroleum. That's in a. That's Elliot. I uh, was gonna say, yeah. yeah. On a day a, that oil's down a buck fifty. You get a hedge fund. Yeah. That's going after it. Oh, let's go look at Facebook. So Facebook. I, I came down yesterday too. So, yeah, you got a little juice on Facebook here. Yeah. Story yesterday, right? Was people were not even corroborate um, cooperating, but being interviewed by um, the FTC and so forth. Right? Oh, were they? When we were in that story. Okay. Or was that Monday? I think it was yesterday. Either way, from Monday, we're down from 190 to under 179. Yeah. I mean, look at Friday, man. Friday, we were just trading at 193. We're 179. $14 haircut on Facebook from Friday afternoon to Wednesday morning. <laughs> I'm telling you, That man. is some volatility, man. And, oh, and here, yeah, let's go. That's because Amazon got hit pretty good yesterday. So if we pull up Amazon, what you're going to see, I believe Amazon actually broke. The consolidation it was in, it was going after the bottom of it. Yeah, it broke it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so bargains all over the place. Man. Look at this. So Amazon went from 1795 to 1735. You broke the consolidation. Yeah. So what this sets up, folks. Okay, bottom line. Now you can see that that oh, baby right is there. sticking out like a sore thumb, man. That could be one day, man. 1672. Right. And uh, just the same illustration, man. From Friday, that we we're at 1830. You're down almost 100 dollars in the price of Amazon from Friday. Where we were at the I open. know. Yeah. Mammoth. And if we go back, now, th this, these numbers, man. You, you go back three months. July 11th. 2000. 2035. Oh. 300 bucks on the dot, basically, off them. Right. We got to go to... Every 10 shares of Amazon, you lost $3,000. We got to go to Bitcoin. Bitcoin broke down. Heavy duty broke... Uh, did that break down? We're on the air afterwards. Afterwards. I, I think it was afterwards. Now, watch this, folks. This is a total... This is saying Bitcoin wants to go to 6,000. That's... And I'm just... Uh, 
I'm not even taking the highs because when you break a consolidation price wise you can take the bottom of it which is 9083 and then I just don't even took up here like 13,000. So that's four off nine would take it to five even. Five. Yeah. I, know. I mean, so, if you did take like, if you take you know, the whole thing. If you took like that area, which we right, might that's be able a good to area. Say is 3,000, exactly. that's down to six. Right. And to put it in context, I mean, that's six. That's not outlandish. No, no, it's not. You better believe it's in play when it's you just not. went from the high of 13,851 to 8,300. Yeah. You know, we've and seen it go to, uh, is this going to bring it all the way back? You can, yes. Yeah. You can, it'll be 19,000. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, you got to keep in mind that we were just trading at 3,500 right. in February. And you go to 14,000. Right. Now let's see. What is, what is, uh, where do we annotate? Perfect. I want to see what kind of retracement this is off of this run because it's been a heck of a run, man. So we're just under 50% now. 50% was at 85.42. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and if you, if you hunt folks, uh, the Saturday edition of the journal, they had a great article on digital money in central banks. Okay. And what the article is about is that going forward, uh, these central banks are getting their heads wrapped around in a oh, big bet. way right now. I bet. Because of the Facebook deal. Oh, for that sure. They, that they know Facebook, they, they'll stop them. If you read this article, there's a million, well, they have about seven big reasons in there that central bank has to stop them. I agree. I mean. Um, and that, but this was also happening is that inside of that, you have um, the uh, head of the uh, UK central bank, Carney, okay. which is really a smart guy. He had a speech to the United States and everyone else saying, hey, digital is the way that this is going to transfer the dollar being king. The dollar's been king evidently since uh, they said. World War II, for sure. I think they said since 1920, though, the dollar's been king. After World War II, for sure. Um, and he's saying that what's going to happen is that if we got together on a, a worldly basis, we could spread that out and we could take that control away from the dollar. And I just start thinking, I says, oh, my God, you know, the U.S. will fight that hand and fist. Sure. Because that's how the, all the controls are. Because sure. who's ever controlling the currency is controlling everything. The default everything. currency of the world, sure. And then listen to this number. This is, a, this is amazing, folks. And this is one of the main reasons we control everything. Is that 80% of all trade done all over the world, even if we're from two different countries, are done in dollar terms. Okay, yeah. Are done in dollar terms. Yeah. 80%. Yeah. So that's why... It's the default currency it, world's, you know, it's, it, commerce. Be, because if we're, whatever country you're in and I'm in, you can't trust your own currency, at least you, 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 yeah. you, you it's know the, that... It's the most stable it's currency. It's the most stable. Yeah. Right. Less yeah. volatility, most right. stability. All right. So... That way, you know, I heard you talking about Bitcoin and being able to use it yesterday afternoon, right? right? And saying, you know, if it moves, if Bitcoin moves quick and you pay for it, you use your Bitcoin to pay for something. Right. You know, you end up, you check it the next day, and that if you hadn't used it, you would it, basically a cup of coffee cost you $35, right? right? That's what people don't want to happen. No. If, if you're relying on a currency, if you're trading it, if you're investing in it. Different market. But that's why the dollar is yeah. supposed to, you know, with that, we got the dollar index still. It's going to 98 The dollar's moving out here today. Yeah. It rejected lower price yesterday. Dow. Dow's up 82. Nasdaq's down 11. S&P's are off one and a half. Gold's down 950. Silver's down 13 cents. We'll come right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow. Dow's up 93. Nasdaq's down 13. S&Ps are off three. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Teddy Kegstad, as we do each and every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. You can reach Teddy every trading day, folks, at Forex. Dash trading dash unlock.com. That's Forex dash trading dash unlock.com. Teddy Kegstad, what's going on, brother? Oh, not too much. Cloudy day in Chicago, but we have nice warm weather, so it's kind of nice. That's a beautiful thing, no doubt. Well, you know, the weather broke here, and I hope it stays this way. I think we have a little heat, but at um, least at night we get some cool temps we do. eventually. We, do. It's, uh, right? we get four or five degrees cooler the last the five days, yes. which is like heaven to us. Yes. Heaven. So we're spoiled right now. I mean, we have like 60 degree weather at night, and that's unheard of in September. That so. is, that's man. sweet. Because we're only getting 70, yeah. Hey, yeah. so currencies, where we, where, heat, we, where, we, where, we, where we are, I mean, you know, uh, you got the euro at 109, the pounds at 123, the yen's at 107, where are we going here? Well, right now we have a rally in the dollar index today, and I think that's really what's going on today, because after we spoke last week, we had a night, we were talking about how maybe we're coming to an inflection point with some divergence in some currencies, and yes. we got that signal. Um, right now, things are reversing gears on a daily basis. Now, I know you like the, the yen, so let's talk about that first. So last week, we reversed gears with the Japanese candlestick patterns um, sell signal, and uh, today, the market turned back to the upside. So we set a nice low yesterday in the U.S. dollar yen trade, and overall, it's been bullish for the past, like, um, basically month as we ended the summer. Now, we're heading into the end of the fourth quarter, guys, so we have a lot of balancing that's going on, okay. and we're on the front of the fourth quarter. So I think right now what we have, especially because this week, there's really no big numbers. Tomorrow we have U.S. GDP, and between now and uh, the close of Friday, um, globally, there's some speeches and some mediocre or whatever, but there's really no um, economic numbers. Uh, the Royal Bank of New Zealand did not cut rates. That was kind of interesting, and I think that's because if you look at what's going on with the U.S. dollar, um, we have currently we have a little rally going on, but now we have the impeachment process that's starting for our president. You have in the U.K. Brexit deal. You have Parliament that came back and they got back online uh, yesterday. So yeah, that's right. I we mean, thought, we uh, thought we thought that would be the big news for October. Wrong. <laughs> yeah. Right. 
But I think actually it's going to cancel it. I think what we have now is that geopolit geopolitics now are off the table because there's so much uncertainty. Okay. So how do you get direction when you have no leadership or question of leadership in the U.S. dollar, uh, no leadership or, or, or question of leadership or ability to move forward in the U.K.? Um, the EU is still stalemated because no matter what, nothing bodes well for them unless they can come to a deal, you know, by October 31st, and they don't want to, you know, and I think that what we're coming to is now we're actually looking at where we can look at the technicals, you know, so I think that today is kind of like a bull trap going on with the U.S. dollar. I'd be very leery of it because um, you had uh, the, the, U the U.S. dollar yen that broke after we spoke last week and yeah. turned around today. The British pound is still lower today, even though it's coming off of its lows because of a strong dollar. I think that the pound dollar is definitely right now going to continue to be a bear for a little bit, you know, and it's because we don't know what's going on with the prime minister. Parliament's back in, in session. You got to remember when they got paroled, we had this little rally that's gone on. So you're getting a little lift, I think, in the dollar because of this. Sure. So it's not because of any real strength of numbers or real of the economy. It's just kind of like a rebalancing because of this geopolitical upheaval that's going on. Right. Now, hey, Teddy, when you look at the yen, right, so the, the high of the yen yesterday was 107.80. It comes down okay. all the way to 106.96, right? It started right. out. And then, so do you look at that, that we would have to get over the 107.80 in order to basically say go back to the highs? You know, I know this, I'm, yes. I'm getting in minutia here, but I'm just curious in general. Do you know what I mean? No, actually, you, you give it. It's a good number because I have uh, 107, uh, 107 107.75 and 108 quarter as two key uh, okay. prices, if you will. Okay. So, and definitely, if we're back above, if we can sustain a trade above that 107.75, that means that we probably now remember we're in an, an uptrend for the past like um, month. Yes, yeah. we've just corrected for the past couple of sessions. Right. So, if this is a corrective move, meaning we're looking for a, another bullish opportunity to buy into, yes. today may be that day. Right. Right. And that right. means that we're probably going to start to get above that first strike, okay, and then look for a challenge of 108 quarter. And if we get above 108 quarter, well, then we're looking to make higher move highs. You know, that right. means that this was Particularly just a, because this was a shallow retracement too, right? Now I can see. Yes. That. Yeah, it's yes. interesting. So, so right. this is crucial actually where we are today because, you know, what happened sure. not yesterday but the, the day before that, the yen. Uh, no, I guess it was yesterday. I mean, that yen sold off hard yesterday when we were open. Yes, it did. Yeah, it pounded we those new lows. Right. Absolutely. Right. Okay. Cool. Right. Okay. Now this could be a trap. Now, now remember. No, I'm with you. I, 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 that's why. Yeah, I, 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 it's pretty cool how it's set up, actually. Yeah. Right. So all your weak shorts, I think they're they're going to panic right at that 108 quarter, you know, and all of your weak longs are going to start to jump in now with this if they're bullish, looking for higher move highs, but if they fail. And we come back and take out yesterday's low. Well, then that's a whole. Well, then everything's off the table. And I think that the major trend, which is still down for the U.S. dollar yen, we might be heading into fourth quarter, where the, the big trend is going to say, "Hey, the bear is back." Yes. You know. And this, as you said at the beginning, this is where the funding aspect and everything comes in at the end of the quarter, too. You know what right. I mean? And this, right. Right. And we had the BOJ met last week, and they did nothing. Right. So. You know, and that's a big deal because now the BOJ did nothing, the, the Royal Bank of New Zealand did nothing this week, and by November they were supposed to cut the rates three times, and they've only done it once. You know, so, so that's a big deal. When, when we look at the euro, I mean, this euro, what, what is it going to take for this euro to get? I mean, this thing looks like it just wants to go lower and lower, right? I mean, right, yeah. absolutely. Um, well, I think that we're coming into that critical support area of uh, 109 half down to 108 half. Yes. Um, it, no matter what, no matter how bad the economy is, bombs going off, oil, I don't care. You know, we've seen this bad movie before. It just seems to bounce all the time. Yeah, you know? right. Um, but there's also no reason to be a bull. I think that the Brexit is a drag going into October 31st. And if you look at the ranges, the, the euro has been a tough trade all summer long. Right. I mean, it's been, you know, a half. I've been trading the euro since the, the, the with the DMARC term became the euro, you know. Okay. And on a slow day, whether it's busy times, bad times, whatever, you're looking at a 60, 70 pip range usually on any given day. I mean, you're lucky with all kinds of major news, pound yen or swimming and making new highs and new lows, and the euro is sitting there in a 45 pip range. Which is Even if it's touching off a yeah. low, lower, higher high a little bit on a couple daily basis, 
it, it doesn't do anything. There's, I mean, it's an, it's an ugly trade. It's one of my favorite markets to trade, and I've had the toughest time trading it for months. I just wait for signals like we had last week, which there have been, you know, only a few over the course sure. of the past. Few and what Teddy's saying there, the reason, folks, is that when you have a, a much smaller spread, you know, guess what? You know, you're trying to get close to the top, trace to the bottom. Well, if you only get 45 ticks, man, I mean, it's a problem. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, they're... your risk reward right. ratio is out the window. Right, yeah. right, yeah. No I doubt. mean, the exchanges and the brokerage houses are happy because they're making money no matter what. Bookie always, always gets paid. Right, <laughs> the spread. Oh, my God. Sometimes right. Tommy, Tommy does a percentage on these spreads sometimes. That's like insane. Yes. You really, when you really see right. the numbers, right. it's, oh, my God. Yeah. You know, would you buy it at that price? Would you sell it? <laughs> they make both. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Folks, you can read Thanks, Teddy guys. every trading day at forex-trading-unlock.com. That's forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy, have a great week, safe week. We look forward to speaking the next Wednesday. Take care, guys. See you next week. Take Thanks, care. Teddy. Stay right there, folks. I'm Tommy and I come you right are back. or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow, uh, check it out. What's Dow, going on? Up a buck sixty-seven, hundred and sixty-seven. Nasdaq up seven. S and P's up five. And gold is down seventeen dollars. Quite a pop, man. Yep. And just checking back on oil, actually getting a little bit of a pop, up fifty-six dollars and twenty cents right now, uh, which is remarkable. Two million plus build. Right. Right. And uh, the estimate was a decline about 600,000 barrels, and oil trades to 56.20, about 40 cents above from where we were trading at. 
but yeah checking out those indices man green across the board and gold pulling back pretty remarkable no Let's doubt pull, uh, can i just jump to the metals because gold I'm sure silver's reacting in the same. Dollar's up 603 ticks. And we got some action in rates as well, I'm sure. So you got gold, silver pulling back, same deal. And let's pull up a chart of that. And you can expect this volatility to continue all day, folks. Uh, that's the bottom line. These are, these are news-driven events. The news out here was that uh, Trump just said that uh, you can uh, expect a deal sooner rather than later to be surprised in China. Believe that, folks, and good luck to you. That's going to be going on for a long period of time. Sure. Um, yeah, here, Trump says China deal could happen sooner than you think. What yeah. number are we looking at? If, yeah. uh, so that's Ah, okay. Like that. Yeah. Uh, there yeah. we go. Yeah. Nice pop, though. That'll do it. That's, it's, that'll it's, do it. It's, it's, this, is a, this is a very tough market if you're trading as those S&Ps. Well, it's, you, know? you can't, no matter how good of a trader right. you are, you don't know right. when the next tweet. Right. When and the next impeachment where, announcement, when, when the next... When, when, you, you when you're going up or down, where the 20 points at a pop, meaning, you know... It, oh, and I say you can't predict the news, right? But what you can do is you can say that volatility maybe isn't priced into the market. And let's finish it up with the VIX real quick, because... The VIX well, getting a little spike, 1845 this morning. Okay, the market so, pricing correctly yep. that, guess what? We're not sure either what the heck is about to happen. <laughs> right, no doubt. No. Stay right there, folks. Uh, think of Swim coming up next. I'm Basil Chapman, Steve Rose, Dave White. will be back this afternoon. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, man. Yeah. Go get him, folks.